some good indicators there, and yet we're not naive to think that, hey, we just run it back and we'll be all good. That's not how we, we look at team building. Um, we look at this year as a lost opportunity, but it's our job to be able to create a better opportunity for next season, and we're optimistic that we'll be able to do so. Um, but like I said, I, I feel the pain, you know, this past couple of days, you know, just talking to fans. Uh, and I understand the, the skepticism of, hey, you know, just this is another year where you haven't had the group, but I would guard against the cynicism. Uh, because just because it's happened doesn't mean it's always going to happen next year. There's no guarantees either way. Um, but we're, we're optimistic that we can, we can put together uh, a team that, that's going to be a whole lot better than, than the group that we just finished with. Well, you mentioned the, that phrase, run it back. Does that mean you guys are looking to make changes? Are you hoping to do things to improve the team? What, what are those steps? What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, look, you're always looking to improve the team. I mean, number one, we, we'd like to be able to, you know, uh, bring back, you know, retain uh, Paul and, uh, and James. Uh, we have a couple of the players that have player options where the ball's in their court. Paul has a player option as well. And then just, I thought last year we probably had too many guys where it made it a little bit confusing, you know, in terms of this year maybe we were short a couple guys uh, of good, complimentary, reliable um, players that, that fit. Now, part of it was a byproduct of when we traded for James, we, <laughs> all our wings went out the, went out the, went out the door. Um, and like in order to get, you have to give. But you know, I think the, there are some things roster-wise that we tried to address during the trade deadline that we weren't able to get done and that we're gonna need to address in the off season. Is Russ one of those too many players? Who? Russ? No, no, th this isn't about any individual. I think it, it's more so about how can we add to the group and to get better complementary <coughs> fits. Um, you know, you study the league and where it's going. You know, we invested a couple years ago in having a ton of wings because it gives you great versatility. I think we probably were, you know, at least another wing short. Obviously, size, length, athleticism uh, are important things, and you'd love to be able to add some youth to the group. Now, every team has a wish list. It's, you don't just get to go shopping at the only place and the other 29 teams get shut out. Um, so there's competition for these, these talented players, but I think we have a lot to sell. The hardest thing to get in team building is to get elite players. You know, once again, Kawhi and Paul were all-stars. Uh, James, you know, uh, had a, a very, very good year and what we've asked him to do, he's done at a very high level as an orchestrator uh, and to create easier opportunities for Kawhi and PG and to lighten their load. And I think he, he definitely responded there. And now it's, you know, we, we have very, very good complimentary role players around them. Can we add, can we add some more? Can we, can we enhance the group? Um, that's our job is to get the team better. And to answer BT's question, you always have to have an open mind about how you get the group better. And we're fortunate, you know, I'll sit and spend a lot of time with, with T. Lou and his, his staff, with the, what we call our back office crew, with our scouts. And we're going to have to be we're going to have to be better, and we're going to have to identify, you know, really really good players on the margins, guys that that will play. I hate to use the word minimum because in relative terms it's a lot a lot of money. Um, the we'll look at any opportunities uh, in the draft, uh, any opportunities via trade. Ellis, so it's fair to say that you and Steve do want the quarterback, the stars, the. You know, Kawhi's obviously coming back with James and Paul too. Yeah, that, that, that's our intent. We, we, we want to retain those guys. We're hopeful we can, but also um, understand and respect the fact that they're free agents. You know, Paul has a decision with his option. James will be an unrestricted free agent. Uh, so our intent is to bring him back, but also realize that, you know, they're elite players and they'll have, they'll have choices. There's a lot of talk about Paul potentially getting the max from other teams. Is there a limit for you guys as far as how far you guys will go as far as paying him? Yeah, I mean, I obviously wouldn't discuss that, discuss that now. I mean, I think the, we, we want Paul, we value Paul. Um, I mean, Paul's done some tremendous things here. The, he's an elite player. And our biggest thing is we, we, we always want to be able to treat players well and pay them fairly. And we also have to build out a team, especially this is a new CBA. Uh, and uh, 
but in terms of the exact money, I would never go into details other than we've had really, really good conversations over the course of the year and hopeful that we can get them to remain a Clipper. Oh, there were reports that Kawhi took less than the maximum extension that you guys got with him. And Paul expressed optimism throughout the year multiple times that a deal would get done. Why hadn't it got done uh, for the season? Like yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, you know, look, every deal has to work for both sides. And I think we got to a point where we just said, you know what, we can continue the conversations, but let's just table it until the end of the year. So I anticipate that we'll pick up conversations. Uh, everything's been on a very, I'd say, cooperative and collaborative measure. And he has, you know, he can sign his extension up till July 1, and then he can also test free agency, and we're hopeful that we can still bring him back. When you say table it to the end of the year, you mean the end of the league year or end of the season? End of the season. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, basically once we got, call it, past all-star break, it was, you know what, I just want to focus on the rest of the season, try to help the Clippers win a championship, and then we can resume conversations when the season's over. Lord, 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 that was like in harmony. <laughs> I know, I love it. <laughs> Russ, Russ put a statement out just after the season, addressing his role this season, his thoughts on the season, and also just some of the reporting about how that may have gone down. Just what can you say about your experience with him this season, especially as it pertained to his role decrease? Yeah, I think you gotta give Russ a ton of credit. Uh, you, you, you look at a guy who's a first battle Hall of Famer, who's one of the most unique players that have played this game. The fact that he's our most athletic player at 35 is, is incredible. Uh, the fact that he was willing to come off the bench, he impacted a lot of games, a lot of wins. Um, and his, his energy, his competitiveness, his fierceness, his downhill ability, uh, he had unbelievable stretches of individual defense. So you gotta give Russ a, a lot of credit um, for, for sacrifice and doing what he, what he did. There's a reason why He's, he's one of our fans' most favorite players, and wherever he's been, he's always been a fan favorite. Uh, guys in the locker room love Russ, so um, got a lot of respect for Russ, what he's done for his career, what he's, what he's done for the Clippers, um, and uh, he's, he's, he's one of the game's true great players. I want he has a player option is, is the hope on your guys' end that whether through him opting in or, or a new deal that he is back with you guys next year? Yeah, I think, look, the way it works with the player options is typically you sit down, I'll sit down with Russ, T. Lou will sit down with Russ, talk with his, rep his representative, Jeff Schwartz, and you kind of outline what the role is going forward. It's very similar to when Russ came last summer. Like we explained to him exactly what the role is, what it could be, the different guys we're looking at, and then Russ has a decision to make. Um, and so we'll kind of go through the process. So I I'm not gonna speak for any player in terms of what they're thinking, but that's our process. Lord. You know, I thought it was a very good group. Was it a perfect group? Of course it wasn't a perfect group, but it's never perfect. Uh, there's a lot of the league, some of the other teams are still in the playoffs. Assuming you're bringing most of this team back, do you feel like you guys are good enough? Are there things that need to be done before you reach some of the, the Denver's and Minnesota level? Yeah, I think we have to get the team better. Uh, I also think I got great respect for those teams that are still playing. And I think where what you want to look at when you're trying to be legitimate and say, hey, we're trying to build a championship contender, you're looking at, are you giving, do you have a chance? Now, for some teams, more things have to go right than others. Um, some, you know, there's going to be a team, whoever it is, that will be the favorite going into the year. I think, as you would agree, there's so much parity in the NBA that if you were to tier the teams, like, the tiers keep getting bigger and bigger. Like, if I, you know, like this year, to me, and you guys can disagree, like, I thought we were a top six team in the league. Um, now, next year, that's the same thing. Will we be a top six team in the league? Now those tiers keep, like I said, they keep getting bigger and it's like uh, an injury here, injury there. You just want to give yourself a chance. You know, you'd love to be in a position where, hey, you go in there and you're the, the 73 win Golden State Warriors where like you would, like everyone knew. I think the beauty of it, if you're a fan of the NBA is like you can make an argument for several teams that have a chance. Like who's going to win these series? I mean, there's, there's a lot of pick -ems. I mean, it's, it's tough, to, tough to figure out who it is. But that also is what gives the group a chance. And, you know, we understand that, that there's windows in the NBA and you try to maximize the window. And that's what we've done each and every year with this group. Sometimes we've done, we've made good decisions. Sometimes we've made bad decisions, but it's always with the intent of maximizing the window. We are still big believers that the window is still open. We're not naive, like we understand, you know, age curve and we study it, we study the progression, we study the progression of our players, 
and that's why we do have belief that this group still has a runway. Um, and but also acknowledge the fact that we can understand the, the skepticism with it and there are no guarantees either way, but we are hopeful that, that we will be able to put together a more complimentary roster going into next season. Let's get ready for Hoop Jab.